Today I'm going to review on the Majesty's Secret Service from 1969. So this month I'm reviewing Christmas sort of films and what better to review a James Bond film for December. And this film's got, um, it, it's set near your Christmas as well so it's a perfect choice. But first subscribe to my channel because it's bloody brilliant this channel. On the Majesty's Secret Service came out in 1969 and it's the sixth film in the James Bond series. It was directed by Peter Hunt who was editor on the Sean Connery films. The music is by John Barry. The film runs 142 minutes and it's one of the longest Bond films. It cost 7 million but made back 82 million and this was the UK's highest grossing film of that year but only made half of what You Only Live Twice made, which was the previous Bond film. The film's based on the 1963 novel by Ian Fleming. The film stars George Lazenby, Diana Rigg, Telly Savalas, Gabrielli Fazzetti, Ilsa Steppart, Louis Maxwell, Bernard Lee, Desmond Llewellyn and George Baker. The film features the song by Louis Armstrong, All the Time in the World, and this was also used in the closing credits of No Time to Die. Peter Hunt wanted this film to be different to the Connery ones, a different style, and the film is now considered as one of the best Bond films ever made. So this is possibly the best Bond film ever made. It's certainly in my top uh, list of Bond films, next to films like Casino Royale, No Time to Die, the Spy Who Loved Me. So it's difficult to say which of them films is my actual favourite. But after re-watching this one, this one's very could be my favourite Bond film. And I think the reason why I'm considering that it's the best Bond films because when I watched the Blue Rear, I, I was shocked. For a start, the picture quality is outstanding on it. It really stands out, really crisp. And also there seems to be additional scenes in this film that I didn't notice before. And it's also a beautiful looking film. There's a lot of mood lighting, like outside, like on the beach, it's like sunset, nice and like dark, proper realistic lighting. And it's very effective during the, the ski chase as well. It's getting dark. It really does create a lot of mood and tension. And most surprising of all, I, I was surprised by how good George Lazenby is. The, the always say he's wooden, damn um, he can't act and all this uh, criticism about them. But I thought he was actually quite good, considering this was his first film. Hey, Phil, I wouldn't say George Lazenby was wooden either. It's more bloody cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, in the films? And he's great in the fight scenes. And there's, there's also acting scenes where he really knocks it out of the park, especially the ending when his wife gets shot. He plays that scene perfectly. He really doesn't deserve all the criticism that he gets because I thought his performance was quite good. He plays Bond differently. And Peter Hunt wanted this film to be different to the Connery films. So he's a more human type of character whereas the other Bonds, they're almost like superheroes in a way. The rest of the cast's really good as well. Diana Rigg, she's one of the best Bond girls. And although Donald Pleasance is the most iconic of the Blofels, I think Telly Savalas, I, I think he's my favourite. Merry Christmas, 007. I'm Sir Hilary Bray. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Bond. Hey, Phil, that's that bugger out the Code Jack. Yes, Bones, he played Code Jack. From 1973 to 1978. Yeah, that bloody Blofeld. Proper bloody shit house. Bald-headed bugger. <laughs> he seems to be like more menacing somehow. He's more talkative, so there's a lot more scenes with him in. So I thought he was really good. Straight away, right from the, the titles of the Bond film. Probably the best title sequence ever. You say like hourglasses, sun going down the hourglass. This represents time going backwards because you see photos from the Connery films, all the Bond girls and the villains, with the sands of time going down. It represents like looking backwards. You also see a clock that's going anti clockwise. So it all represents going back in time. 
And that combined with the theme from John Barry, it, it, it's probably my favourite title sequence. And the graphics are good as well. The girl's nipples stand out. It's sort of like a unique film that stands out on its own. I know there's references about Bond being married in other films, but it, it's really like a, an oddity. And this is classed, in my opinion, as the most authentic Ian Fleming novel. I've read all the Ian Fleming novels and the early Connery films were a little bit similar. Stuff like Dr. No and From Russia We Love. But our class on Her Majesty's Secret Service is the most authentic Ian Fleming novel adapted to screen. And straight away you know this film's gonna be like not like the other other films that you've just seen. Even right at the beginning, as George Lazenby kinda of winking winking to the audience, breaks the the fourth wall by saying this never happened to the other fella. And he looks directly to the camera. This never happened to the other fella. That kind of represents to the audience that you're about to watch something a bit more unusual. Don't um, expect it to be like other films. When he says this doesn't happen to the other fella, he, he's referring to Sean Connery. One of my favourite moments in the film is the ski chairs. It's in two parts, actually. There's the, the beginning part, and then Bond and Tracy are in a cabin where he proposes to her. I know I'll never find another girl like her. Can you marry me? And then it continues the next morning, the ski chase. It's a very long extended ski chase, and it, it's one of the highlights of the Bond films. It's brilliant the way it's shot. There's a great line where one of Blofeld's henchmen falls into this machinery. There's a spray of blood and guts. George Lazenby has one of the best lines. He had a lot of guts. <laughs> and there's actually a lot of good lines in this film. It's quite funny. Blofeld's lair's good. You say all these women that are going to carry a virus. Plan on sterilising. It's going to hold the world to ransom. And there's lots of funny scenes when Bond's sleeping with some of the women. Oh, Phil! If I was in Blofeld's lair with all that lot, I wouldn't want to bloody leave. I'll be there till next fucking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and the song All the Time in the World, it, it kind of has like a, a double meaning as well, because they don't really have much time. His wife gets shot as soon as he marries her. And in the, the closing credits of No Time To Die, you get that CM song. We've got all the time in the world. And if you notice, with the, with the girls in Blofeld's Lair, Joanna Lumley's there as well. She'd later play Sapphire and Steel, being the Avengers. Diana Rigg was in the Avengers as well. So this is like a romantic film as well. It's almost like a love story. The regulars are, are good as well. Bernard Lay is them. He seems to have more to do in this film than all the others. The scenes where he's in the office, the scenes where he's at home, and there's also he goes to Bond's wedding. Money Penny's good as well. She's at Bond's wedding at the end. I like the scene where Bond throws his hat and she catches it. So that's like representing the hopes he, she finds a man like him. One of the faults with the film is Kay was not in really. He's at the wedding and that's about it. But the film doesn't involve gadgets. There's only really a safe cracking device. And that's about it. There's no more gadgets in this film. But the actual ending of the film is quite shocking. It must have really shocked the audiences to say Diana Rigg as Tracy getting shot at the end of the film. Be very unexpected that. And George Lazenby's acting, it, it's brilliant the scene where he's holding her. And it looks like he's going to cry. It's all right. And it's really annoying that Lazenby didn't come back for a, like at least one more film. It would have been perfect to see him in Diamonds Are Forever. Like a re revenge sort of film where he's after Blofeld. That would have been a brilliant film that if they'd have done that. If they could get Telly Savalas back as well that would have been perfect film. Much better than the one that we got with Sean Connery that's almost like a silly comedy. So overall I thought this film was like an action masterpiece. It's definitely one of the best if not the best. And it's a unique film as well, a one-off. So out of 10 I've got to give it 10. 10 out of 10. So you think you're a good film, Phil. But you can't beat Roger, can you?
Hey everybody, bye! Like, subscribe, and share. See you next time. Bye. Bye.